So, uh, so My Open Math is a free and open online homework system. Uh, I'm from Yakima Valley College. Let's see if I can get this to, there it is. So open source homework system, it's algorithmic questions auto graded for algebraic answers. There's tens of thousands of questions. Um, there, there are some courses that are aligned with open textbooks. Um, you can have the learning management system. A lot of uh, instructors like to integrate this. I myself don't because <laughs> I like the features of this, but some schools require that you integrate it so you can do um, LTI cartridges or there's some Blackboard. There's also some, some other options from Moodle. So one big question that I know a lot of people come up with sustainability for the My Open Math. And right now we are funded through corporate sponsorship and um, donations. So that's how we're sustaining right now. So we, what we're trying to do is take OER from just a book to a full course package, and it can provide some local control for instructors. Uh, existing courses, arithmetic, pre-algebra, beginning and intermediate algebra, math literacy, uh, math for liberal arts, college algebra, trig, calc, business calc, uh, business pre-calc, and statistics. Now, of course, all of these courses, if you have something that you want to um, mix and match, you're free to do this, right? Because since it's all OER, you can go and say, oh, I want this question from over here. So the th key about this is it's created by faculty for use in their own classes. Uh, most courses consist of consistent format and, of course, adapt, customize, and remix everything. So this is the uh, demo course that um, David Lippman and Melanie Rusman uh, created. So this is a screenshot, and all I have in my PowerPoint is screenshots. So this is what they've set up in their course. And so you can see here, this is for section 2.2, graphs of linear functions. Then they have the textbook, the video, and then the section 2.2. So here is a screenshot going into the textbook. And then here is the screenshot of showing that you can embed uh, videos. And most of the videos embedded in this are uh, from YouTube. So here's a question, and it wants the slope of the line before. And so I just typed in two and you submit the question, you see it, you, you try it again. Then this right here automatically, when you click in the box, type it in, it'll pull up the um, formatting for you. So you can see that I'm now typing in a fraction. And so here is a video help if you need it for this question. And so now you can see here for this question, yeah, I put in two thirds and you can see it's gotten correct. And here is a multiple choice, which color line goes with which equation. So matching. Um, here is a drawing question. Give you the options. So once negative two, zero and a zero negative three. So here you're putting in an equation. Um, so, but is it any good? There's no reason to use a proxy for quality when you can measure student success. So one of the things is, and this is probably no surprise to people in this group, there's no significant difference when switching to OER. And there's been no significant harm, and in some cases, student success. So everything is remixable, questions, assignments, everything. Um, so here is a library screenshot, and you can see algebra and how it's um, uh, how it's been created. Now, one thing that I do a little bit differently, but this is just me, is I actually take and make my own library structure because 
I look at a course I'm teaching, and this is just me personally, and I say, okay, I've got to cover chapter one of the book, and I look what i got to cover in that, and then I make a library structure to how I'm going to cover it. That way, when I look at it, if I'm covering section 1.1, I've pre-selected all the problems that I want to cover in my homework that goes along with uh, what I'm teaching, right? Some people don't like doing that. I'm like, it just seemed logical to me, but it's, you know, however you like doing it. So here's some problems on trinomials. And here's a grade book where you have the toggles and some percentages, grade calculator. So here's an example where you have different types of entry. Now this right here is the old system of entry because you can see the preview button. The new one that is now the default comes up with it automatically has the exponents and the pretty format. And let's see. So here's an item analysis where you can go in and grade individual questions. This is if you have an essay question. You would go in and you'll have that same question for each student. So you can just scroll down and grade. Um, there is a way to use rubrics. I've never used the rubrics, just so you know. I know you can do it. I just haven't done it. And so here is how a screenshot, and this is actually going to be, um, looks like my uh, business calc class, actually. That's starting up on September 19th. So this is how I structure my course. Whether you want a calendar or not is up to you. It's a, something you can put in or not put in. And they also have forums. So message. So there's a student asking, and then you can respond to that. You can do mass changes of options in the course for dates. Let's see. So here's LMS integration, additional options. Late passes allow you to automatically assign so many times students can be late with homework. And this is set up that they don't have any auto sign, but any late pass will extend an assignment for 24 hours. You know, so that's how, how, do, how are you going to give students, if they need a little extra time, how many can they use on an assignment? And you set this all up in advance you know, before assignment starts. And then you can set up whether you want links for the calendar, start and end times for the course, default start time. Um, if you want to explore, uh, you can log into My Open Math. Username is guest. If you want an account on the getting on the home page, it can request an instructor account. So there's the training course. You can go through that. Here's the forums in the training course and that is it no I went through it a little bit fast but <laughs> 15 minutes I think that which was super we... efficient <laughs> <laughs> all right any questions for Mike on my open mouth before we move on to our last presentation I, have, I just have a quick question. So, so Mike, for your courses, um, does this become your text and your homework? Is that, does this sort of become the whole thing? Yeah, I actually, um, well, coming officially in um, winter, we're going to have OER because we just did a major revamp of our courses. And almost every course, almost every course is going to have an OER textbook. Um, my 111 actually doesn't require an OER textbook, and that's because I allow any edition, 9th to the 11th, of the publisher version, because that's actually cheaper to get those because you can get them for like five bucks, okay. right? And the the uh, OER textbook, they we teach some stuff that isn't in there, so it's one of those. It's like if I have enough time, I could actually go in and add it but you know we always all have this all the extra time right 
So, yeah, but we're going to pretty much OER for almost, almost all of our courses that we can. Great. Congratulations. Mm -hmm. Your students will be very grateful. <laughs> yeah.